Hey guys, uh, we are here for a tutorial for our introduction to polynomials, section 1.1.1. Uh, um, all resources for this should be in your packet or on our website. Okay, what I need you to do really quickly is take a look at the vocabulary that I've already filled in for you in the first couple of uh, rows here. So I've got some vocabulary words here, and then I've got two charts that are already filled out without the example on the class 5 uh, polynomial by the degree. What I need you to do really quickly is just pause your screen and make sure you get these things written down as I quickly talk about them. That way you're not trying to chase and all that kind of stuff. So pause real quick, get that written down. Okay, so real quick, polynomials are expressions with multiple terms. They can have one term, but uh, keep it in mind, this idea of a term is a piece of an expression. Terms are separated by plus and minus signs, so again, they're the pieces of the expression. Um, they can have variables, they can have exponents, they can be just numbers by themselves, but again, they're separated by plus and minus signs. Uh, the degree of a term is the highest exponent attached to that term, so whatever that highest power is, that would be the degree of that term. So for instance, if I had gave you something like 3x to the fifth, the degree of this term would not be 3, it actually would be 5, since 5 is the only exponent, it's the highest exponent here. Okay, the degree of a polynomial would be uh, the, the degree of the polynomial, let's just make sure we say this very clearly for you, the degree of the polynomial is the highest exponent of any individual term. So if I give you something like 2x to the second plus 3x to the third minus 4x to the fourth, even though this 4 right here is at the end of the polynomial, it's the highest of all the exponents here, so the degree of this polynomial would be fourth degree because 4 is the highest exponent. Okay, moving down to classifying polynomials. We could classify polynomials in two different ways. One, in terms of their number of terms, and the second is in terms of their, their degree of their polynomial. So uh, as far as the number of terms is concerned, if it only has one term, it's a monomial. If it only has two terms, binomial, three terms, trinomial, four terms. We actually don't have a special name for that, so anything above three, we would just say four-term polynomial, five-term polynomial, six-term polynomial, and so on. If we're talking about a polynomial in terms of its uh, degree, then we would just figure out what that degree is, like up here it was fourth degree. Then we've got some names of that. So if it does not have an exponent at all, so it's like just a number, just like a, an eight, for instance, that would be a constant. All right, so you know an eight would be a great example for that. Linear would be something that's highest exponent is a 1. So um, 4x plus 1, even though there's two terms there, the highest exponent is a 1, as there is an understood 1 on that x right there. Uh, quadratic, quadratic is actually the highest exponent is a 2. So I can go 3x squared, even though there's only one term there, the highest exponent is a 2, that makes it quadratic. Cubic would be the highest is a 3, so I could have something like 5 minus 4x plus 2x to the third power. That would be a cubic because of this 3 right here. Cortic would be the highest power is a 4, so 4x minus x to the fourth. That would work because the highest exponent there is a 4. And quintic would be the highest exponent is a 5. So um, x to the fifth minus 3x squared would still be a quintic because the highest exponent was a 5, so the degree of that polynomial would be a 5. Anything past 5, um, we're just going to say 6th degree, 7th degree, 8th degree, 9th degree, something like that. All right, now, so real quick, I want you to pause your video and try these examples right there in your paper. First, give me the degree, and then name your polynomial really quick. So pause and figure that out. All right there, please check your work against mine, and you should uh, be...
uh, you should get the same thing I had there. So just double check that your work matches mine and we will be in good shape. Okay, let's move into some examples. Okay, so talking about adding and subtracting with polynomials, what we're going to do here is we're going to try to simplify. If you'll notice that there's no equation in this, these are expressions, so we're going to simplify. Combining like terms will be the number one goal. Keeping in mind that even though all you see is x's as the variables here, if it's x to the third compared to x to the second compared to x to the fifth, those are different variables. Even though the x is the same, the exponent's different, making it a different variable. So, for instance, negative x to the fourth has to only be combined with this 7x to the fourth because they have the exact same variable. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and match up the best we can. The symbol in the middle reminds us that we're adding. So negative x to the fourth plus 7x to the fourth, that will give me a total of 6x to the fourth. I'm going to cancel those out or cross them out once I've combined them. That way I don't keep adding them together. Next, I've got an x to the fifth, and I need to look over here with this other expression to see if there's any terms that will go with that, and there's a 5x to the fifth. So 13x to the fifth plus 5x to the fifth is a total of 18x to the fifth. Cross these out so that I don't keep adding them. And then I've got a 6x to the third and another 6x to the third. The 6s don't matter. It's the x to the thirds that make them like terms, but it does give me a total of 12x to the third. Now, one more step before I'm finished, because I don't have any more like terms, so I don't have to combine anything, but I do need to put this in what's called standard form, meaning the highest exponent on any given term down to the lowest exponent on any given term. So the highest exponent here would be this 5, so that's going to have to go out front for us. So I'm not going to change the value of anything, I'm just going to rearrange. 18x to the fifth, now the next highest would be this 6x to the fourth because of the 4, so plus 6x to the fourth. Notice that it's a plus sign because this 6x to the fourth is a positive number. And then finally, 12x to the third, even though this 12 is here, it's the exponent that helps me decide where it goes. And since it's the smallest of these three exponents, it goes last, plus 12x to the third. And that is my simplified polynomial expression. Okay, my next example is going to require me to subtract, so I've got to be very, 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 very careful. There's a couple of ways that you can do this, and what I would advise you to do is without trying to do this in your head, I would go ahead and distribute this negative symbol into this set of parentheses here. That way we can lose the parentheses and we could just combine like terms as if we always do. So let me just model what I mean. a to the third minus 2a squared stays the same because there's nothing that needed to be um, distributed in. But the next, if I distribute this negative to both pieces of that set of parentheses, you would get negative 3a squared and a negative times a negative is a positive 4a to the third. Now I'm looking to combine like terms. a to the third goes with 4a to the third. 1 is the understood coefficient here. 1 plus 4 is 5a to the third. Cross those out because I've already combined them. Next I've got negative 2a squared and a negative 3a squared. That's the same as if I wanted to subtract negative 2 minus 3 or I can even add a negative 3 and that's the exact same thing as negative 2 minus 3. So negative 2 plus a negative 3 would be a negative 5 a to the second. Now I need to double check that my expression is in standard form. The highest exponent goes first and I look here is 3 the highest of these two and it is. So that is my simplified polynomial expression in standard form. Now I'm gonna leave this next one for you as it's a little bit longer but I think that you could see kind of the pattern that we're going through again I would advise you to distribute where you can and then just combine like terms alright we're gonna to move to multiplying and again the distributive property applies but you have gotta be very careful with our exponent rules and that's something that seems to show up uh, in our future uh, simplifying expressions and we've got to make sure that we're doing a good job of 
minding the exponent rules here. So just a real quick refresher over here on the side. I'm just going to do this for you. Um, something like x to the second times x to the fourth. That what we would do here is we would add the exponents because x to the second is x times x and x to the fourth is x times x times x times x so that I have four of those. So when you multiply all of those, you just count your x's up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I've got x to the sixth. And if you notice that x to the sixth is the same as x to the two plus four. So two plus four is six, x to the sixth. So all I have to do when I multiply like bases, meaning the big number on the ground is the same, is just add their exponents. So here, 5x squared times x to the second, that's going to be 5x to the fourth. Keep going here as I distribute 5 and then times 3x. Again, when you're multiplying, you don't need like terms. So I could just multiply. 5 times 3 would be 15. And x to the second times x to the understood one is to the first, x to the third. All right, finally, 5x squared times negative 2 would be negative 10. And I just bring the x to the second since this was a constant term and didn't have any variable or exponents for me to deal with. Now I need to double check that I'm in standard form and that there's nothing else that needs to be combined into simplest form. 4 is the highest exponent, and there are no other like terms. So this is my simplified polynomial expression. Okay, we could bring it to a little bit higher level when we have more things to, more things to distribute. But the distribu distribution process is the same here, where I would go ahead and distribute the x to the fourth to all three pieces, and then add that to the result of distributing the three to all three pieces. So we'll do that really quickly for you. x to the fourth times 5x to the third, that's going to be 5x to the four plus three is seven. x to the fourth times negative 7x is a negative 7x to the fifth. And x to the fourth times three would be 3x to the fourth. Now, be very careful not to stop here. We still have some work to do with that three. So I'm going to clean up some of this over here just to make sure we've got plenty of room so we don't run out. Okay, now I've got to, to go ahead and distribute that 3. And so that's 3 times 5x to the third, which would be plus 15x to the third. 3 times negative 7 would be negative 21x. And then 3 times 3 would be positive 9. Now I'm looking for combining like terms and then standard form. Don't do standard form first. Just look through there. Are there any like terms? And I don't see any, so now I need to check for standard form. Is 7 indeed the highest degree? It is. Is 5 the second highest? 4 the third highest? Yes. 3 is the next highest. 1 is the next highest. And then the constant is the lowest. So we were fortunate this time not having to move anything. That won't always be the case. Okay, the last example that I want to do with you is this example here where we've got to do a little bit of a blast from the past. Some of you might remember this as FOIL, first, outer, inner, last, where I'm going to have to double distribute, or you can just think about it in terms of double distributing. So y squared is going to be multiplied by both 3y to the third and negative 5, and 4y is going to be multiplied by 3y to the third and negative 5. So you can look at that as first being the first two terms, outer being the furthest apart outside terms, inner being the two that are closest together on the inside, and last being the last of each pair of parentheses. Or you could just double distribute. y squared times everything in the second set, and 4y times everything in the second set. You'll get the same results. So y squared times 3y to the third is 3y to the fifth. Okay, y squared times negative 5 is negative 5y squared. Now I'm going to add, because I'm combining like terms, I want to keep everything addition, so I'm just going to go ahead and put plus to bring in my next set of distribution results. 4y times 3y to the third is 12y to the fourth. 4y times negative 5 is negative 20y. Now I'm checking to make sure that I'm in that I've got all like terms taken care of. I don't have any more like terms, so no more combining needs to take place. 
but I don't have this in standard form. I'm going to have to swap these two terms here. 